TT Roxas27 wrote the following. Well, after you mentioned Ghost Game and you didn't do Gammon until now, I would like to see its Digivolution line next. I really liked the Crimson Banquet episode. I started seeing Digimon Ghost Game because of Kano Weissmon. Hello my good friends, I hope you're all doing fine. My name is Jesse and in this video we are going to do TT Roxas 27 in service by discussing Kano Weissmon. However, before discussing it, I believe it would be best that we first go way back, way 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 back to its rookie form, Gammon, the Ceratopsian Digimon. I like Gammon for multiple reasons, I will share all of them in this video. So I suggest you relax and let yourself be drawn by my voice. First reason why I love Gammon is because of its contribution to the continuation of Digimon with names based on the Greek alphabet. And to give you a quick run. First, there is Alphamon, a Holy Knight Digimon, a member of the Royal Knights. Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. The last letter is Omega, and Alphamon has a colleague who is called Omegamon, otherwise known as Omnimon, another member of the Royal Knights. And both Alphamon and Omegamon, in a way or another, represent the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. The second letter in the Greek alphabet is Beta. And we have a Digimon here named Betamon, an amphibian Digimon with a Digivolution line hiding terrifying Serpentine Dragon Digimon. I enjoyed going through them in its own video. The third letter is that of Gamma, and we have the Digimon we're going to explain here named Gammamon. The fourth letter is Delta, and in the Digimon universe we have Deltamon, a composition Digimon who was forced to fuse by a computer bug and now it became a fine-dish Digimon with three heads, each of which having their own mind. That's why they have no spirit of cooperation. This should be the Digimon with a name coming from the Greek alphabet, and Gammon can fit right into it. I'm hoping the Digimon developers will go as far as to give us another Digimon with the rest of the alphabet, as there is quite a few left. If they do, I'd love to make a video explaining all of them. So. Firstly, I like Gammon for being a continuation of Digimon with names based on the Greek alphabet. Secondly, I also like Gammon because it is a continuation of dinosaur type Digimon. Digimon who are based on dinosaurs, and there are quite a few. Gammon has its place right among Digimon of the likes of Toskmon, a super heavyweight class Digimon with a reckless personality, or Dinorexmon, a carnivorous Digimon named the King of Terror for killing its opponent in a very brutal manner. Gammon is a wonderful addition to that type of Digimon and what is even more interesting is that it has its own unique characteristics separated from the group. You see, Gammon is a very unusual young white Digimon that was recently discovered. It is said that its manifestation is linked to the digital signals that came from extragalactic space. Extragalactic, meaning different solar systems, different galaxies, different constellations, in other words, outer space. And it is good to know that even space, a subject that us humans are still trying to master, can already have an impact to the digital world. In this case, it can, according to theories, become the immediate cause for the creation of a Digimon. Now, as I said before, Gammon is a dinosaur Digimon like many other Digimon, but it is a unique one. It has its similarities, like for example having three horns just like Triceramon, horns used for both offense and defense. And speaking of Triceramon, it is good to know that both Gammon and Triceramon are based on the Triceratops, making the two dinosaur Digimon quite related, almost like brothers. What is very unique to Gammon is that it is capable of flying for a short period of time with the tiny wings on its back, making its body float. Not many dinosaur Digimon are capable of doing that. In fact, only very few. Pteramon is the best out of the bunch, but it is only one dinosaur out of the whole group. This already shows how unique Gammon is. To finish, while many dinosaur Digimon have a bit of a violent nature, at least when you consider Greymon, who is extremely aggressive, or Alumon, who is ferocious and one who even has a natural rivalry with Tyrannomon, or even Spinomon, one who is said to live a brutal existence. Gammamon rarely shows its emotions. It 
shows a sort of self-control, which in one way or another makes it quite intelligent. And it seems that once you reach out to it, it will gradually become attached to you. Now, let me give you another reason why I love Gamamon. This little dinosaur and the way it was built tells you all you need to know about a Digimon, its Digivolution and Digimon genetics, just by observing its behavior and habits. You see, Gamamon has four champion Digivolution depending on how it trained itself and how it behaved. However, it does have a reduced number of ultimate and mega level Digimon. What this tells is that in Digimon genetics, which in some way is not so different than that of us humans, if you think about it, there's already a certain Digivolution path that they are destined to follow. There are exceptions in the how one can evolve and into who it can digivolve, but if you were to follow the natural course, there isn't really much that one can do about it. If it isn't clear, don't worry, it will be at the end of the video. But to give you a better example, let us take Digimon World 3 for example. All Digimon have their natural Digivolution route. However, when you take them in a gym to train them in other attributes like the elements or spirit or intelligence, that Digimon will be able to Digivolve into a form outside of the line it was destined to follow. And Gammon pretty much is the best example of a Digimon where that concept was explored thoroughly. Well, one of the best. We did speak about Pulsemon, didn't we? A Digimon have to get back to now that I think of it, but a Digimon where the concept of lifestyle defining its Digivolution path is also just as pronounced. Now as I said, Gammon has four champion level forms, but three of the four are from a similar Digivolution route. We are going to focus on them first, the fourth champion will be discussed shortly after. I believe I have told it previously in the explaining all dragon type Digimon video, that Dinosaur Digimon and Dragon Digimon are really related in this universe. Some Digimon start as a Dinosaur Digimon and remain Dinosaur Digimon throughout their Digivolution line, but many end up Digivolving into one of the Dragon types. With Gammon you have a mixture of both. When it grows up with a Blazing Spirit, its body will turn red in its next form, called Betel Gammon, a Digimon of the Dragon Man type, just like Wargreymon. And with Betel being a reference to Betel Geuse, a red supergiant star and one of the largest visible to the naked eye. Know that many of Gammon's Digivolution have names and attacks referring to space and constellations, which makes sense as its existence is linked to digital signals that came from extragalactic space. So, Battle Gammon is a Dragonman Digimon, one with increased agility along with its power and speed, making it a classic close range combatant. And contrary to its rookie form, it can use flames. It can punch its enemies with the flames it amassed in its hands, and the power of its attacks will double as the excitement of its emotions grows. If Gamamon doesn't grow up with a blazing spirit, but instead puts more the emphasis on having a clear and calm spirit, it will instead digivolve into Chaos Gamamon, with the Chaos being a reference towards either Chaos Australis, a binary star system in the Southern Zodiac constellation of Sagittarius, or Chaos Borealis, with a star marking the top of the archer's bow. Or finally, the Chaos can be a reference to the Chaos Media, a star in the Southern Zodiac constellation of Sagittarius with an apparent visual magnitude, making it easily visible to the naked eye. I like that these stars have been referring to the constellation of Sagittarius, I like it because it sort of forces me to mention Sagittarimon, a digital representation of the Sagittarius constellation, and a mutation among Centaurimon species, a species of Centaur Digimon which exist in quite a few numbers. And let me tell you that Gammamon and Sagittarimon are quite connected, but we'll get to it in a moment. Now as you've said, Chaos Gammamon is a Gammamon who put more emphasis on having a clear and calm spirit making it evolve into this form. And Chaos Gammon also became a calm, cool, and collected Digimon who fights by observing through the opponent's movements. While Gammon wasn't exactly good at flying despite having some small options for it, Chaos Gammon became a prominent Digimon in the air. It gained this yellow potagium which extends from its arms to its thighs, and a similar yellow membrane between its fingers. A patagium is a membranous body part that assists an animal in obtaining lift when gliding or flying. Think of the bat. 
and Caius Gammon uses its patagium not only to soar like a glider to fly far from high places but also to ram on opponents. When Caius Gammon flies, it can only ascend once while gliding, using the jet ports on its knees. Ports it also uses to kick opponents. To finish with the first digivolution path of Gammon, if it were to not do much in its training, meaning that it won't start developing a blazing spirit or it won't start focusing on having a calm mind, it will then digivolve into Wazen Gammon, who isn't of the Dragon Man type, but instead of the Ceratopsian type, which means that it remained a dinosaur in this case. The Wazen, in its name, is a reference towards a star in the constellation of Canis Major, a constellation in the Southern Celestial Hemisphere. Wazen Gammon is a Gammon that took on a quadrupedal appearance, which is appropriate especially for a Ceratopsian Digimon, as most Ceratopsian dinosaurs were quadrupedal. It now gained an imposing attitude with its bulky appearance. It has a very strong physique when compared to Betel Gammon and Caius Gammon, and you know what? Despite having the appearance akin to a tank, it has a generous heart. That's maybe even its strongest asset, I would say. However, I do have to tell you to not mistake its kindness for weakness, as the Digimon is equipped with fire weapons on various parts of its body, just like Mega Gargomon, Metal Garurumon and more. The two horns on the Calvaria it once had as a Gammon turned into long-range cannons. With those, it can shoot high-powered shells. The attack is called Sedna, with Sedna being a reference to a dwarf planet in the outermost reaches of the solar system. Wazen Gammon can also fire a positron cannon which is shot from its long gun barrel while it pierces its tail into the ground to replenish energy. I like that it became another user of positronic energy, the same energy used by Imperial Dramon who we discussed in its own video. I am going to try to not confuse you too much with the technicalities behind positronic energy but suffice it to say that we could, as humans, in theory, create what is called a particle beam weapon which uses high energy beam of atomic particle to damage the target by disrupting its atomic and or molecular structure. A positron weapon. Digimon, or the likes of Imperial Jamon or Wazen Gammon, have full access to that energy. That's why this Digimon boasts great offensive power. And in the case of Wazen Gammon, it might even boast the greatest offensive power out of the three. However, each time it shoots, the exhaust port opens and radiates heat, so it is unable to rapid fire and its normal pace of its actions is slow. And to finish, the horns on its snout has turned into an anti-aircraft gun and the tips of its four feet have turned into small autocannons and it is completely capable of firing them. These three Digimon, meaning Wazen Gammon, Betel Gammon and Chaos Gammon, may have their own areas of expertise, yet all three of them have one ultimate form in common who has all of their specialties combined along with its own specialties. I'm talking about Kano Weismon, a Sky Dragon Digimon. Its name is a combination of Kano, which is probably a reference to Canopus, a star in the constellation of Carina and the second brightest in the night sky, and the Weiss in its name is the German word for the color white. And speaking of the color, Kano Weismon's body surface has turned a high purity white as a result of the flames of its blazing spirit intensifying even further. And remember, it already had a motivated and intense spirit as a Betel Gammon, that spirit was passed on. It is said that if Kino Weissmon draws out power that transcends its limit during battle, its whole body will glitter with white light, and become so bright that it can even be detected by digital worlds from other dimensions. An interesting concept as it hints to the various potential dimensions that are in the digital world, and if we were to sum them all up, we might be here till tomorrow. And now, as a Kano Weissmon, it prefers to play in both power, which it had plenty of as a Wazen Gammon with all of its weapons, and speed, which it can thank to its large wings. Speaking of power, this Digimon has the potential to hit really hard. It can tear the enemy to pieces with its tough claws, which boasts the power to easily cut through Chrome Digizoid 
only if it has low purity, it can also gather all the energy in its body to fire the brightest fireball from its mouth, enveloping the enemy in a scorching hot star even if they are mega. Its speed is also really impressive. When it closes its wings, it can charge through like a bullet of light. So, suffice it to say that Kino Weissmon loves to do battle. In fact, it is a Digimon that shows a joyful expression as the battle heats up. Now, remember, it isn't because it loves to do battle that it will allow injustice to take place. In fact, it will not permit injustice or unjust actions and takes them on in a righteous manner by overcoming them. To finish with this Digivolution line, the Sky Dragon Kano Weissmon, who is at the ultimate level, can further Digivolve to become the Mega Level Sirius Mon, a Shining Dragon Digimon, meaning that it is a similar type of dragon like Shine Greymon. And considering both their profiles, I believe that what makes them so unique is their access to what I call Star Energy, energy they can get from stars or energy sources from outer space. Shine Greymon, for example, uses solar energy, and Sirius Mon can shoot rays of light when using its twin cannons equipped on its arms, and it can use a blade of starlight to pursue enemies. To create that blade, it fuses light into a blade to make its enemy violently explode, and the bright white light created by this attack resembles a shooting star from a distance. So both Sirius Mon and Shine Greymon are shining dragons or light dragons. Sirius Mon belongs to the Virus Busters family. Members of this field are generally sacred or angelic Digimon or those who dwell in haunted areas. This explains why it crashes in like a shooting star to defeat its enemies after hearing a voice calling for help from far, far away or when it senses evil. And that gentleness goes so far that Sirius Mon is willing to put its weapons down and open its heart to an opponent in the middle of battle if it senses the possibility of reforming them. So we really have a powerful but also a very kind Digimon with intentions that are pure. But Sirius Mon only came to be via Gammon's Digivolution line which I would call the positive line. The line that is more good than anything else as the Digimon we have spoken about so far are goodwill Digimon. It is the other line that is quite different. At the moment Gammon is going to develop its more ferocious side or dark side. It will digivolve into the Dragon Man Digimon Gulus Gammon, a Digimon that digivolved when the evil heart hidden within Gammon was released. The Gulus in its name is a reference to the brightest object in the constellation Leo and one of the brightest stars in the night. While it hasn't been confirmed, I have some reason to believe that the digivolution process to become Gulus Gammon is a dark digivolution, like the digivolution which created Skull Greymon. Think about it. Dark evolution is a corrupt form of normal evolution that is typically triggered when a Digimon falls under some sort of negative influence, and all symptoms can be found when looking at Gulus Gammon. It has intense negative emotions. In fact, it even rejects interference from those around it and is only interested in fighting. If it grabs an opponent that comes into its sight, its attacks will not end until it kills them and it puts up ferocious battles where it attacks regardless of whether its limbs are broken. I'd like to hear from you guys and hear your opinions about this Digivolution and whether you would consider it a dark Digivolution or not, because Gulus Gammon does show more signs of being dark Digivolution than not, even if in the series, at some given point, it did show a calm spirit. Share your opinions in the comment section. But I do have to say the following, if this theory is correct, that would mean that Dark Digivolved Digimon can also have their own Digivolution path. It will be clear with Gulus Gammon. So Gulus Gammon controls fire, but not just any type of fire. It controls the flames of darkness, which typically holds a bluish blackish color. No wonder this Digimon has been given the title of Dark Conqueror. And you will see, once it goes beyond its level, it will become even more dark. When it goes into its ultimate form, it will become the black evil dragon of destruction called Regulus Mon, with Regulus being a reference to the brightest object in the Leo constellation and one of the brightest stars in the night sky. Regulus Mon is outright evil and plots to rule through rage and fear, and it sure has the power to do so. It can fire three penetrating lasers from its left arm's shield, it can stab the opponent with its prolonged tail, it can see the opponent's body jaws on its left arm's shield, 
and its most threatening move is where it spits out a ball of dark hellfire that swallows all things. Not only physical matter, but even light itself is consumed by it, leaving not a trace behind. This move reminds me of Imperial Jamon's Mega Crusher attack, where it fires supermassive dark matter, swallowing everything within a dark space and completely annihilating everything within a radius of a few hundred meters around the impact point of the dark matter. Truly terrifying when you think about it. While being at the ultimate level, Regulusman is said to boast power reminiscent of Megidramon of the famed Four Great Dragons, and its advent alone spells disaster. I can already hear some of you claim that Megidramon is still stronger than Regulusman. If you were to think that way, I will reply with the following, relax. At the end, Megidramon is so powerful that its powers were sealed away by some sort of force, meaning that we have yet to see this Digimon in full power. Regulus Mon is very interesting because it introduced us to a new concept inside the digital world. A new virus which is called the Gulus Realm Burst Contagion, otherwise known as the GRB Contagion. It is a virus that causes the Digimon infected by it to undergo a twisted change in personality and run amok. And Regulus Mon is said to be the source of that virus, which, I presume, is being used to reach its goal, meaning to rule through rage and fear. Here's something interesting, some Digimon are a bit immune to this virus. You see, some Digimon have Black Digitron in their system. Black Digitron is a secretion which causes Digimon to take on a black color and gain enhanced stats such as power increase, stamina and more, sometimes at the expense of their sanity. Those with Black Digitron in their system are said to not get infected by the GRB contagion. Which is interesting because we get to see how a virus interacts with other phenomena in a digital world. And the GRB contagion did lead to very interesting theories and debates online. On Reddit, for example, people wondered who even infected Gammon with the GRB contagion. Let me read you some of the answers. Ikusama wrote, I'm guessing that is Gammon naturally. I believe Gulus Gammon said that they are the true Gammon, meaning that the white Gammon is probably the infection used to stabilize or stop the GRB contagion. Akantocephala Vast 68 wrote, Maybe no one infected Gammon, but it was the one who started the infection, and then someone took advantage of it. It is said on the profile of one of Gulus Gammon's evolutions that the infection has not been confirmed in those who have Black Digitron, so maybe those Digimon became black as a means to protect themselves from the GRB contagion. Well, this show would give us a nice origin story about the Black Digitron, because in reality we still don't know much about how it came to be, but good to know that the Digimon world is expanding and getting more detailed. It's giving me more work, but work isn't really work when you are truly passionate about it. Let us get a little deeper to understand the GRB contagion's properties. During research into Digimon that can secrete the GRB contagion, which means that Regulusmon might not be the only source of this virus, simulations of injecting enormous amounts of the contagion into that same Digimon will, or should theoretically, make that Digimon digivolve further. So, in order to create that theoretical digivolution, researchers have repeated the simulation hundreds of times as each test confirmed that the digivolution would result in that Digimon if the right and suitable conditions are met. We can presume that if the GRB contagion is transformed in huge masses into Regulus Mon, that it will digivolve into Arcturus Mon, another Dragonman Digimon with a name being a reference to Arcturus, the brightest star in the northern constellation of Bootes. Now, Arcturusmon is nothing more than a theoretical Digimon, it doesn't exist. That is also why its mannerisms and behavior are unknown. The only thing that we would be able to know is that the amount of dark energy coming from the GRB contagion far surpasses that of all identified Digimon associating Arcturusmon's manifestation with the digital hazard. And normally, the digital hazard is simply a symbol on certain Digimon, and those who walk with such a symbol mean that they have the potential to either be highly destructive and, if corrupted, could threaten the very existence of both the digital world and the human world. And Actorus Mon could pretty much be a digital hazard, because it can infect Digimon with the GRB contagion pretty much at will. 
it can either stab a target with an arm drill and inject them with the corrosive GRB contagion, or it can coat both of its drills with large amounts of the virus, rapidly spinning them to condense the secretions to inordate concentrations, and then launches it forth as a ranged attack, which can infect the victims. Now again, while we are so detailed, Arcturus Mon is a Digimon that is still a theory, it doesn't really exist. And to my surprise, if we were to continue with Arcturus Mon, despite it only being a theory, and fuse its data with that of Sirius Mon, it should normally, theoretically, give us Proxima Mon. With its name being a reference to Proxima Centauri, a small star in the southern constellation of Centaurus, and a new member among the Centauri Digimon. A largely unexplored family type of Digimon which does have enough members already. Centaurimon is the most obvious member, but there is also Vajramon, a servant of the Digimon sovereign Ebon Woman. There is Sagittarimon, who we already mentioned previously in this video, Kentaurosmon, a member of the Royal Knight and one who walks around with an armor of red Digizoid, which is a very very unique form of Chrome Digizoid. For more information on that, check out the link in the description box. Oh, and there is also Armormon, an android Digimon rumored to be a member of the Centaurimon family. And now, we pretty much have a godlike level centaur in the Digimon universe named Proximamon, a Digimon so extraordinary that it belongs to the Digimon type called Unique, a type with Digimon that are quite difficult to understand and usually extremely powerful, way more than your average mega level Digimon. And to just give you a few examples of Digimon of the Unique type, as there aren't many anyway, you have Ragnar Lordmon, a Digimon said to have been born when an evil being lurking in the depth of the Dark Area was awakened, and the Digicores of the two legend arms, meaning Durandamon and Brawiludramon, resonated with each other. Weapons which can either save or destroy worlds. There is also Chaosmon Valdur Arm, a Digimon who should not even exist, as its existence is akin to a bug, or in other words, an impossible singularity. The Digimon is such a cliché that the Digimon world shortened its lifespan. And here, for the sake of this video, we have Proximamon, one who would command the powers of creation and destruction. Before going ahead and explaining the Digimon, be reminded that simulations run on high-speed processors predict the theoretical manifestation of this Digimon, but whether it actually exists in the digital world is unknown. It is still Digimon hidden behind a theory. That being said, Proximamon is capable of producing the conflicting forces of holy and evil energies, but in its own way. I say that because we have another Digimon who is also capable of using holy and evil energies, namely Mastemon, an angel Digimon who not only manipulates light and darkness and commands armies, but also a Digimon with the power to cross through space and time. We did discuss the Digimon in its own video, link of it is in the description box. Proximamon is different in its usage of holy and evil energies. It is said to have the ability to disintegrate any matter within the digital world and then reconstitute the disparate materials into wholly new configurations. That is why you see it walking around with the black particles which perpetually surrounds it. With the black particles it can break down all matters into its smallest constituent parts. And with the massive battle axe it can shine wholly attacks to reorder the fragments created by the black particles into new configurations. So, by simply existing, Proximamon would rip apart and recreate all nearby Digimon and even the surrounding environment itself, and the appearance of this Digimon could potentially rewrite the entire digital world in an instant. I would say that it somewhat functions the same way as Dexmon, a ghost lifeform that can't even be classified as a Digimon. It also possesses the power to destroy and to create, but has its own twist to it. It may not have the power to destroy and rewrite the Digimon universe, but it does have the ability to absorb Digicores into its body and disintegrate and then reassemble it in perpetuity. A Digimon said that defeating it is within the realm of impossibility. And Proximamon is no different. In fact, its power and presence is so great and dangerous that all data concerning the simulated requirements to digivolve into Proximamon are a fiercely guarded secret 
in order to avert catastrophe. Hey guys, this is the end of the video. TT Rockstar 27, I hope you are happy with me making the video for you and also all the others. By taking into account your comments, many wanted me to go through Gammon anyway, so here we have the video. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I have to say that the Digimon was so interesting that I have been talking, I guess, almost 30 minutes now about it. I really hope you guys aren't bothered with it. It was lots of fun for me. What are your opinions about this Digimon? How do you view Gammon and its Digivolution? What do you think of the GRB Contagion? How do you view Proximamon? Write down your comments in the comment section. And if you want me to take a look at some other Digimon, let me know in the comment section. Also, to my surprise, while doing my work here, I came across the Toy Agumon variant. I'd like to discuss the Digimon, so you know what, if we can bring this video up to about 500 likes, I'll make sure to release that video first. So in order to have the video guys, press the thumbs up button. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to get more into Digimon lore. There is still so much that needs to be explored and I'll make sure to get as deep as I can. In case you guys are new, know that all my videos are placed in different Digimon playlists which are always updated, that way you can catch up on newer and older videos.